Hello and welcome to another Calamelson.com video. This time we're on board for something a little less exciting. It's Lufthansa's European business class on the beginning of my journey to Bangkok. This journey will take me to Brussels where I'll meet my Thai Airways flight. You join me at 5 in the morning at Stockholm's Arlanda Airport in Sweden, home to ridiculous queues to get through security. This video was taken back in July 2022 when issues with labour shortages meant that almost every airport in Europe was affected. I checked my baggage in the night before to save some queuing but had an issue with my onward boarding pass, which I'll share in my next video about time. In all, it took around 30 minutes to get from land side to air side, which is not great, but it could have been a lot worse. Despite being a hub for Lufthansa's Nordic Star Alliance partner, SAS, at least until they joined SkyTeam, the lounge wasn't open this early. I did attempt to grab a coffee, but the queues were just too big, as I think my visit to Orlando coincided with Swedish summer holidays. Instead, I just waited at the gate for the flight to be called and for my luxurious chariot to await. Of course, that chariot did not appear and we retreated to regular European business cars just like economy, except with an empty middle seat. There is no special design to these seats, and the business class zone can be adjusted depending on demand. In front of you is a literature pocket and a tray table, just like economy class, but the only included entertainment, your window. As I looked out the window, I could see a Bombardier Mitsubishi CRJ900ER, which would fly direct to Brussels. I'd much rather have taken this route, but it added several hundred euros over the indirect routing via Frankfurt. It was a beautiful day though on our departure from Stockholm and it's always fascinating to see different parts of the world while up in the sky. Just over two hours long, this flight is a reasonable length to get a feel for Lufthansa's short haul business class offering, and let's just say, it's not worth it. received a printed menu displaying the one item available to eat for breakfast. While it was perfectly serviceable, 
it feels akin to a supermarket dash around Lidl, and I suspect that it was constructed on similar margins. This was followed by water and coffee, both in nice service wear, but the latter was poorly brewed. A lot of people will complain about British Airways, but I've easily had far better offerings from them on shorter flights. I did manage to get some good shots of this apple and small chocolate loaf, which of course made up for all of the shortcomings. And with that we came into land at Frankfurt with an interesting parallel view of another Lufthansa aircraft which always fascinates me. We deplaned at a bus gate, which is exactly what you want when you have a shortish connection. We made it to the terminal in good time with around 80 minutes in the departure hall. I had some troubles with my boarding pass though, which I'll explain in the next video and how you can avoid the same problem. The connecting flow is much the same, but of course far shorter since it was just a hop across to Brussels in Belgium. Again, it was another bus gate for this flight, but we boarded a Lufthansa A320 in the newer blue and white livery, rather than the classic blue, yellow and white of my previous flights. Earlier in the year, I had invested in Apple's AirTag product, which led to a sinking feeling. My luggage was stuck in Frankfurt and would proceed to be for the next four days while I was on the other side of the world in the Philippines. This is unavoidable, with all the chaos that was taking place at airports like Frankfurt at the time, and thankfully I got all my stuff back eventually. All I can say is that the Apple AirTag product is both reassuring and anxiety inducing simultaneously. The flight flew by, but I was left with a less than impressive opinion of Europe's largest airline group. The offering is very bare bones and excels nowhere, There'd be few instances where I'd opt for business over economy on Lufthansa's European routes again, only if it was included on a connection to long haul, like I did in this example. My verdict? Don't bother trying it for yourself. You will be distinctly unimpressed. What did you think of Lufthansa's European business class? Be sure to drop a comment down below and subscribe to see the much more interesting, exciting connecting flight from Brussels to Bangkok on Thai Airways, which is extremely disappointing, but one that you won't want to miss. Catch you next time. Bye bye.